gentlemen, the tall ship's race has just begun. Every year on Australia Day, Sydney's magnificent tall ships take on the ferries, water taxis, tour boats, private cruisers and yachts in a dramatic race from the outer harbour to the harbour bridge. And if you can ignore the bridge for a moment, you can imagine something of what it was like in 1788, when Captain Arthur Phillip brought the 11 ships of the First Fleet into Sydney Cove. Stepping ashore at what's now called the Rocks, at the southern foot of where the bridge now soars. I don't want to see a smile on your face. What's the problem? You've got a problem. Captain Philip brought 759 convicts with him, along with 200 soldiers to guard them. To brutalize them, in fact, for they were worked and punished more ruthlessly than animals, building Australia's first settlement. Intent to murder completely at the mercy of hardened Royal Marines and other troops who shared the absolute contempt of the time for so-called transportees. But what they helped build was a harbour front neighbourhood that stands today as one of Sydney's most historic, most intriguing heritage sites. The rocks contains many vital keys to Australia's birth and early development. Cadman's Cottage, built in 1816 as a barracks. The Sailor's Home, built in 1864 to keep the sailors out of the area's notorious brothels. The Mariner's Church, built in 1856 to make sure they stayed on the side of redemption. This was the old coroner's court and city morgue. These warehouses were built to store tea, sugar, liquor and cloth from Asia. Australia's shortest street, Atherton Street, was the home of early workers' cottages. Unwinds is a name you'll be familiar with, established here in 1843. The Fortune of War Hotel dates back to 1922 but stands on the site of a hotel of the same name which was built much further back in 1828. Even Captain Bly is here, staring imperiously across the harbour toward the Sydney Opera House. While a replica of his notorious ship, the Bounty, lies berthed in Darling Harbour when it's not doing tourist cruises. And right through this crowded nest of narrow streets and alleyways, hidden courtyards and old arcades, you'll find sandstone, Georgian and Gothic revival facades, gables and wrought iron bars have actually blended quite well with modern office and bistro architecture to make the rocks a fascinating, enjoyable, living, working antique in the shadow of Sydney skyscrapers. For much of its time, the rocks is a fairly quiet, peaceful shopping and dining retreat from the crowded sidewalks and traffic of downtown Sydney. But at weekends, that tranquility explodes as the rocks turns into one of Sydney's most colourful, most crowded and definitely most raucous shopping markets. When the market's on, it's not easy to recall that this place was first built by chained convicts under the command of soldiers with whips and flintlock muskets. The intriguing heritage of the rocks, the birthplace of Australia. Mm -hmm. 